Welcome to balmy Colorado. I think it's a whole whopping five degrees today. Uh, with that going on in the background, a little bit of snow, a little bit of Santa Claus, a little season action, uh, I decided to uh, break down a, a, a fundamental exercise and uh, kind of a, a technique that I use uh, quite a bit to render texture on skin, uh, overlaying textures and strokes, and not just simply airbrushing with uh, broad, vast strokes. And what we're going to be doing is talking about um, some of the textures here in the, in the skin and also the hair. Basically, I, I have the opportunity here to do a guitar for the NAMM show, and uh, I found a picture of my favorite primate uh, besides uh, Clyde. And uh, this guy here, uh, obviously, you recognize. But uh, there's a lot of surface texture and stuff that's rendered in uh, the computer on this particular image that I'm going to pull off uh, with the airbrush. And uh, this whole image is basically nothing but a, a network of soft pillow strokes, almost kind of like using almost like a pointillistic effect, as well as uh, dagger strokes that are just layered and layered and layered. So with that in mind, uh, we'll do a little bit of a close-up here. We'll take a look at what we got going on, and I'll kind of show you how I'm going to go about doing it. If we notice here, there's a, it's a really soft application of dots, and how I achieve that is by just kind of putting the right paint in the airbrush is by pulsing the brush back and forth. And I'm not getting real defined. All I'm doing is rather than simply just going like this with the airbrush and, and creating a vast application of color in it to define more or less a contour or help to define the dimensionality of the shape, I'm beginning to just create a network of regular dots. And I'm not going to try to create a perfect dot matrix. I'm not really focusing on trying to make everything perfect. Some of them are going to overlap and what it's going to start to do is build up secondary textures uh, with those building up. Now you can see here we've got a series of dagger strokes that are, give us the implications of the hairs coming off here. Now some of those are going to come up into this. A lot of this is going to get knocked back again too, but you'll see that the dagger stroke, I'm starting at the top and I'm letting it tail out. So what that's doing is creating the strength of the stroke where the the hair or the follicle would go into the skin and then the hair would kind of dissipate and uh, taper out as it gets away from the surface of the skin. Once I get that stuff kind of worked in, then what I'm going to do to, to create more of a, a dimensional aspect to some of this random application is to come in here and create more defined applications. And you can see now I'm getting a little tighter, but I'm still pulsing. But what I'm going to do is give you a little bit more definition and slowly bring out the highlights and create a little bit more sense of volume with these random strokes. Okay, up in here on the top of the nostril I've got some soft definition beginning. Now I'm going to go ahead and start getting in there a little tighter and I'm, I'm doing this with not, a, this isn't a white color, this is kind of like a khaki color. It's not perfectly white. It's going to give me a lot of headroom to come back in with the white and get my extreme highlights, give it more of a sense of moisture on the nose. But you can see how my movement of the airbrush isn't necessarily parallel to the surface, moving this way or moving this way. It's, it's a pulsate action. I'm kind of like stabbing it, leaving my air and the needle at the same relative position. I'm not necessarily increasing the size or, the, or removing the needle back, allowing more paint to go by the needle, but I'm simply kind of locking it in and then just pulsing on it. And every now and then, you know, you'll just kind of get in a little tighter and you'll start to get the de definition that you want. Another thing I'd, I like to do with this is to uh, maybe, you know, listen to music. You get into a rhythm when you're doing this stuff and you find that if you're, you got something going in the background, it's more subliminal. Okay. The little hairs in the nose. You can see just little, little suggestions. Now I'll come in with the little dagger strokes. You can begin to see how this image is completely created 
from the combination and the overlaying of dagger strokes and little kind of pulsed, what I like to call pillow strokes. And we'll have static images to show you guys along the way, but I just wanted to kind of give you a brief kind of overall of how I approach this particular style here. Now even with this here and this area here, I'm going to start to build up some of the subtle texture underneath the hair. And you can see that I'm just kind of randomly adding a little bit of interest in the surface texture to this. Rather than simply going like this and building it up, this gives you a lot more detail and adds a, a nice dimension of interest to the image. And this will be gone over a couple more times with different colors and values, grays, darker greens, bluish greens. And come across the lip here. And I'm just going to start with an initial guideline there. Now I'll start to pull a little bit of dagger strokes up for the reflections off the lip. Now I've got a lot of the dagger strokes here kind of working in a somewhat fluid direction and kind of defining the shape and the flow of the hair. And also here off in the distance you can see kind of a tree line starting to establish and the same application of pillow strokes. Now the definition of these aren't going to be anywhere near what we have developed here in the face. This is going to help us get a sense of perspective and depth of field. Once you get the strokes in here for the hair and we'll be going back over these a couple different times but you begin to get a nice layering to them and the viscosity of your paint is really important at this uh, name part of the game here and so I'm just wanting to get these things kind of working nicely going back and forth leaving the air on all the time I notice I'm doing a little bit of curving here and there trying to get that flow making it feel like it's coming off the side of the head once I start to establish the general flow of the hair, then I'll come over, do come on top of everything here with the uh, same color, and I'll just start to lighten it up, and I'll create a little bit of highlights, helping to create a more of a solid dimension of the hair, and setting up for a lot of the final highlights that we'll be doing in our painting. I think it gives you a pretty good idea how we're breaking it up with the dots and the daggers. This gives you a pretty good idea how I like to break things down in very simple form and stroke technique that I'm using here with the dots and the daggers. Um, this is just my underpainting. We'll be going back in probably three or four different colors that I'll be uh, using throughout the whole process. And uh, I will have, a, have Diana try to chronolog this stuff as much as possible. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Okay, after I finished up my underpainting and I you know, did all the dots and the little daggers and stuff. I went in with a, a mixture of uh, blue, black, and a little bit of white. And then I started to build up a lot of the, the contrast that I was looking for. And I also did uh, a considerable amount of uh, dotting and kind of pulsing with the airbrush, as you'll see in the texture of the skin here, as well as coming back in and extending some of the daggers and setting up some of the contouring and, and the, the shadow development on this side of the face. After that was done, I went back in with pretty much straight black with just a couple drops of purple. Uh, and I went in and, and developed even further contrast into the darkest areas of the image. Also along uh, some of the areas here, I used the, the uh, stippling technique as well with the airbrush to create a consistent uh, random texture. I know that's kind of an oxymoron bet, but the, uh, the consistency as far as the application overall, but the randomness with the pattern. Um, so at this point in time, I'm ready to start doing some of the highlights. And I'll also be including uh, the same process again, uh, using a, a white with just a couple drops of uh, orangish yellow in there to kill some of the blue cast. 
Um, I also have gone in with the candy and hit the background with the trees. And it starts to set up kind of a nice little uh, landscape over there. And now we're going to start focusing on coming back in and hitting some of the hairs, some of the textures on the highlights in this side of the face. Now I'm only going to be focusing on this side of the face where the most immediate light exposure is. And as I go over towards the shadow side of the face, I'm going to, I'm going to darken up that uh, highlight color just a little bit so it's not as uh, prominent as it will be on this side of the face. So um, for those of you guys, I've had a couple PMs and requests. They wanted to see how the new hobo performs. I'm going to be doing my highlights uh, with the hobo. This is hobo number one. And um, I've got it set up with the point two tip and needle. And uh, quite honestly, it's very difficult to tell the difference between the performance of the two at times, uh, between the Mojo and the Hobo, but uh, I'm very, very content with uh, how this has been working. I know that sounds like an advertisement, because it kind of is. When you guys ask me, you want to see how it performs? Well, I'm going to show you how it performs.
Wait. Wait. Wait.